The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As I said earlier in the week, we continue in the Sundays of Easter. This past Sunday, we had as our first reading a portion of Acts chapter 4. Also on the Sundays after Easter, the uh, epistle, or not the epistle, but the first reading is from the, I guess, history book, if you will, the Acts of the Apostles, the history book of the early development of and growth of the Christian church. Anyway, this past Sunday we had our reading from Acts chapter 4, and I'm just going to read for you verses 10, 11, and 12 of Acts 4. Setting the stage, the apostles were used, Peter was used to, to, uh, by the Holy Spirit to heal someone. And that got the town in an uproar, that got the authorities uh, angry, and they brought Peter to trial. And, uh, and here's Peter's response. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Here is some of the consistency of our great and our loving God, because he has always said he is one. His word has always revealed him as the one God, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the Godhead, one God. But it has for almost as long as we have been told that, uh, that there's been alternatives, lies, uh, error, false, heresy, and so on, that says, oh, all roads lead to heaven, and it doesn't matter who you believe in as long as you're sincere, or something along those lines. Lots of variations on that theme down through the centuries. Here, Peter says some words long ago that are our words today. As we continue with the overarching theme of gathering as God's people, we gather because Christ has called us his own. We gather in the name of Jesus. We gather Sunday by Sunday in worship in his house, in his presence, at his feet, because there is no one else. There is nowhere else to go. There's a beautiful tie-in. We are currently in the adult Bible class that, uh, that I'm leading, and, and we're streaming on Sunday mornings around 10 o'clock, uh, studying the uh, Looking to Jesus, a faith-building study on the book of Hebrews. And there's a powerful tie-in with Hebrews chapter 9, because the author of Hebrews, a couple of times in chapter 9 of Hebrews, uses the phrase, once for all. Once for all. And he's referring to what Jesus did in entering the Holy of Holies, entering into the presence of God, not with the blood of some other sacrifice, but with his own blood. And by the power of his death, and by the power of his resurrection, and by the power of his being in heaven now, by that power, he continues to save. He continues to forgive. He continues to fill and empower us. No one else can do that. No one else ever has done that. No one else ever will. For there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. My prayer is that that promise of God and that bedrock of our faith will bless and strengthen you with peace and joy today and always. I invite you to pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that it is your name that saves, your name that redeems, and that it is your name that you give to us in the waters of baptism, calling us your own. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the power of your name, 
the power of your resurrection, and the growing faith that you give us in your word. Strengthen us, bless us, as we walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen. God's rich blessings to you. I look forward to either seeing you or being with you this weekend in worship. The Lord be with you till we meet again.